When I think of strings, I think of rich chords and soaring melody lines. But with kinetic strings, things are about to get moving. Okay, we're back, and this is Simeon from Praisetracks.com, and Kirk Hunter is no stranger to string libraries, but kinetic strings is a little different. So what Kirk has done, he's given us a very interesting string motion engine that will inspire us to create parts with a little movement and action to them. Um, you know, there is a place for all of the richness and the, and the lush and all of that stuff, but sometimes you need something that just kind of gets you moving a little bit, kind of inspires you and sparks your imagination. That is the hope with the kinetic string. So let's just dive in and take a look. So you can see that we have kinetic strings running in the full version of Contact, and it's divided up into several sections, but all of the controls that you need are going to be on this one screen. So you have a section for violins, violas, cellos, and basses with up to 64 steps per part. So we're just taking a look at one of the presets, Superman 1, and really just staying on this is really kind of fun. And you can just see how the, how the different parts just kind of move along the timeline. Okay, so let's take a look at another one of the presets and let's go to In America. Now you can see that the violins and violas are using just one of the regions, like a shorter region, and the cellos and basses are using a longer region. So what that allows you to do is to create a little interest and have the parts kind of playing against each other. So let's have a little fun with this and, and take a listen to how this sounds. And you can just hear, you can just hear those uh, wonderful, What's so fun is that the rhythms are kind of just uh, playing against each other and that's what gives it that really nice feel. Now, when you're using it in your DAW, we've not been recording any of this, but uh, the ideal thing is, is to record uh, what you're playing in your DAW so you can layer this, use it as a foundation, and uh, just kind of add some more parts. And we're gonna, we're gonna do some experiments with that too as well. What I like is that you can play along with the parts. So you're, you're holding the chords down, but while you're holding those motions down, you can play along with it. I think that's what makes it fun for me. And you can see you have spiccato, marcato, and pizzicato. This is definitely tailored for short, uh, short parts, short violin parts. Uh, there's no legatos or longs because it's strictly to get those really cool uh, motion-oriented uh, parts going, the action and the movement. These strings were recorded at the First Presbyterian Church in Santa Monica, California. Really nice space, and uh, you can just hear how tight everything sounds and uh, very beautiful. Let's go to the mixer page. Uh, you've got controls over each section. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and select another. Let's do Superhero 1. Now this is a shorter little ostinato type of thing. And we can control the mix. Yeah, there's the cellos and the basses, and let's uh, just very clean, very nice. You've got EQ over here. Uh, you've got different things to shape the velocity variations to just uh, allow it to be more um, human or real or just those little variations that make things sound alive and rich. Uh, so you've got um, velocity vari variations, the velocity sensitivity that, so it responds to how, uh, how you play. 
So all of these controls just make the experience just feel, uh, interject a little randomness and, and um, I guess humanity in the, in the midst of it. So I'm gonna play this part back. You've got, of course, you've got the reverb section here in the middle, um, and then the different uh, mic perspectives. You've got a close, mid, and uh, far mic perspective. And then what Kirk has done, he's given you some really uh, interesting factory presets so you can actually go real dry. So uh, let me just uh, go ahead and play what we did and uh, show you, uh, let you listen to what the differences are. So this is the factory mix. Now that's bone dry. And so you can hear how tight that room is. It just has the close mics enabled. That's dark and distant. So that just had the far mics enabled. And um, let's go ahead and listen to that again. And let's go back to the factory mix. And then you have the section mixer here where you can just kind of set, set up your own blend of all the parts. Yeah. Yeah, so that's really cool. So it just gives you a lot of flexibility with the, with the sounds here. I like the superhero things, the action. Um, yeah. So let's just pull up the factory mix again. Yeah, this is Captain America. Very cool. Okay, so what I wanna do, I'm gonna go ahead and lay down another part, and then I'll show you how we can stack other instruments on top to just kind of build. So this is, this is something that you'll use to build uh, your arrangements with. So here we go. So let's get started with this. So I'm gonna stop that. And I went ahead and loaded up a couple of instances of um, the Virtuoso Ensembles, also by Kirk. Kirk uh, put this out. And the Virtuoso Ensembles is just a really fast way to uh, have a lot of really good sounding sections here. So let's go ahead and add a layer of horns and hopefully I can remember what I, what I just played here. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, so you get the idea. And now let's just use another instance of Virtuoso Ensembles and let's just try the, uh, the percussion. Uh, and let's, uh, let's just take a listen to what... Yeah, so it's just got some really cool hits and uh, snares here. So here we go. Yeah, this is on the fly, so <laughs> let's check it out.
Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's fun. So that's that's what I really have enjoyed about using uh, kinetic strings is just that the fun that it just starts to generate. It just makes uh, putting these parts together just a lot of fun. It makes it really fast to get some really cool ideas and then you can just build out from there. Yeah. We just did that just in a just in a few minutes. So there's a feature of kinetic strings that's really exciting. So you can take the generated parts and let's say that you wanted to use that with another string library. Well, you can with uh, kinetic strings. And let me show you how you can do that. So here we are with what we just did. And what I wanna do, what you can do is that as we play the MIDI part, as we play the part that we just recorded, we're gonna click on this icon here, this little MIDI icon. So here we go. I'm gonna click on that icon and it says it's waiting for note input. And let me go ahead and start the track. And you can see that it lights up. So now it's it's actually recording and capturing the parts and the chords that I played in. Now I'm gonna stop it. And now when we un un when we click off the MIDI icon, it turns into drag and drop MIDI. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate uh, this horn track here. So let's go ahead and, and select um, the strings so we can, the shorts, let's go to the shorts here and uh, let's just take a listen to what's gonna happen with this. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drag and drop the MIDI from kinetic strings, I'm gonna drag and drop it right out to the beginning of this uh, part here, and boom, there you go. So you can see how it just generated the MIDI part, and you drag and drop it, and you can assign it to any um, any library. Shorts, remember, it's gotta be shorts. It, that, uh, that makes sense. So now let's listen to what it sounds like with the Virtuoso Ensemble shorts uh, playing that same part of that kinetic strings was playing. Here we go. Yeah. Now let's just solo, let's just um, mute the other parts here, the horns, and uh, so you can just, just hear the uh, virtuoso ensembles by, by itself. So you can get different textures. The possibilities of getting different textures is really interesting. Now let's play it along with the kinetic string parts and, and listen to this. So the possibilities really, uh, he's given you so much that you can do with this. It, it just takes you a long time to wrap your head around it uh, because there's so many possibilities. So up to this point, we've talked a lot about the motion engine itself and all of the presets that Kirk has provided. Um, and it's amazing what you can get with those, but sometimes you might need to program your own. So let's just take a look at uh, the toolbars and how you can create your own rhythms and uh, save them as custom presets. Okay, so we're back at the interface and with each section, all of the controls are duplicated. And so you have a global control that you can turn all of the engines off. And then this little tab at the end will also allow you to mute and unmute the individual sections. What you can also do is you could almost paint and erase the parts. So if you, if you kind of click and drag up on a segment and drag it over, you can actually just fill in the whole thing. Yeah, just like that. And then you can go at the bottom, just drag, take your mouse and drag at the bottom and that will erase the parts. And you can just kind of click and drag up just to kind of toggle the parts on. Draw your own parts here. Okay, let's just solo this so we can just hear what the violins are doing. Yeah. And we can just drag it out. And then we can also shorten the, uh, shorten the region with the handles here. 
Yeah, isn't that cool? You notice this icon here, it almost looks like a little thought bubble with an asterisk. So when you click that, then it shows you a lot of different uh, patterns that uh, string players would play, just normal ostinatos, typical, typical ostinatos. And that button is duplicated here on each of these toolbars. So what we can do uh, with the violins, we can click that and it pops up at the top. So let's just kind of click this first one. And you notice it populates the whole um, the whole line here. So here we go. Yeah, and let's choose another one. Uh, we can go that. And so what you can do then, you can go in and customize it. You can just kind of make it uh, make it your own. And you can do that with each part. You can also do it globally with all four parts by doing the same thing. You can click the, the little thought bubble with the asterisk and uh, watch what happens. I'm just going to do the uh, quarter note, uh, triplet, and eighth note. And see, it populates all of the parts. So now... Also, you've got some things on the toolbar where you can select which accent, uh, when the accents happen, what beats are um, accented, and how uh, dramatic, how intense it is. Uh, you can actually transpose. The, so the violins now, the 8VA, I can take those up an octave. And then, yeah, it'll play up an octave and you can just uh, have control over the range. What uh, what we can do, let me pull up another, um, let me pull up Marcher. Now, there's so many controls and I don't want you to miss, uh, miss this. One of the things that you can do is tighten and broaden each part so they can play, so the parts can play real tight together or the timings can be kind of stretched out to make it a little bit more relaxed. And that is on that Titan slider uh, right underneath, right here. Let's just hold this chord down. And I think uh, I'm in the range of the violas. Yeah, so let's dr drag this uh, Titan and broaden slider a little bit and listen to what that does. You hear that? And then we can go back and make it tight again. Yeah, that's really cool because it, uh, and then you can do that for each section. So you could have a section that's tight and you can have maybe the violas and cellos maybe a little bit looser. It just gives you such uh, control over what you can do. It is amazing all of the things that he's allowed you to do with these. So you got the dice, you've got the copy and paste patterns and but what does that mean if you can't save them? And uh, so I'm gonna show you a really interesting way that you can save your own custom patterns. So let's get back and take a look. So the thing that you wanna do, you wanna create snapshots. So you have the main instrument loaded and click on that little camera icon, that'll put you in snapshot mode. I'm gonna go into RoboCop and listen to this. So I want the basis to do something else, a uh, little, little something different. So I'm gonna just draw a couple of things in here. Yeah, there's the basis. And you can always uh, adjust the ranges too. So, so the ranges of the sections can kind of, kind of intertwine and overlap as well. And then let's see the violas. I'm just gonna make my own pattern here or just, and let me solo this, see so if we can hear what that's doing. Okay, and I wanna save that. So to save a snapshot, you have to click on the little camera icon, and then this will allow you to uh, save your customizations. You hit the disc icon, and let's give it a name. And I like to give it a name similar to the, uh, to the pattern that I've got loaded, the global pattern. And that way it kind of helps me to keep organized a little bit. And buddy, that's a, that's a full-time job. So I'm gonna call this RoboCop 1. And we can save, save or save as, and there we go. And then we can drop down and you can see I've got some other snapshots saved, which is really cool. It's a cool way to customize it. The core patterns are not gonna be renamed. When you're doing this, make sure you give it a name uh, that's gonna make sense to you when you wanna come back to it. That's Kinetic Strings.
It's just really something. It's like falling down, uh, falling down like a rabbit hole of motion, and you've got so many cool different presets um, that you can mess with. This is Pirates. You know, it just fuels the imagination. It fuels creativity. And Kirk has gone overboard to give us a lot of these uh, in-depth, flexible tools to take kinetic strings and really make it your own, which I think is great. So again, this is Simeon from praisetracks.com. And get your strings moving. And we'll see you next time.